This is part three of our table series on Microsoft Access databases, and we're going to be looking at input masks. Now, what is an input mask? Well, an input mask is a group of codes that indicate the format of all the values that you want in a field that are valid. So, for example, if there's a specific format for what must go into a particular field, and we want to specify that, we can use special codes to say, hey, this is what it must look like. So when we talk about these fields, there are different options available to us. There's different codes that you need to know. Now, there's two scenarios with most of the codes. For example, there's a scenario when they must have that particular value. And there's one where it could have that value, but it could be blank. So we have the compulsory option and the optional option. So let's take the scenario of a digit. If we've got a number, any number from 0 to 9, it takes one digit then we will put a zero as the compulsory code and a nine for the optional one. So if it's definitely got to be there, we put a zero. If it could be there, but it could be blank, you put in a nine. So if you want a two digit number, it must either be 10 up until 99. You'll just put two zeros there and that will be a compulsory two digit number. But maybe you want a letter to go in a particular place and any letter from A to Z. Then if it's definitely supposed to be there, you would use the capital L as the compulsory letter and a question mark if it's an optional, which means it could be a letter or it could be blank. We don't mind. What happens if it could be a letter or a digit in that particular place, that particular slot? It could be a number or a digit. Uh, so it could be A or it could be three. If it's compulsory, then we're going to use the capital A. But if it could be blank as well, or left out, then we're going to leave a small a as the optional letter or digit. And what happens if it's any character or space? It literally could be anything. It could be a question mark. It could be a letter. It could be a digit. If it's compulsory, then we're going to want to use the ampersand, or what you might refer to as the and symbol. But if it's possible to be left blank, then we can use the capital C. So there are the codes in the beginning. There are lots of other codes, but that's what we're going to start off with. So in South Africa, we have license plate numbers, and they look something like this. They have three letters followed by two numbers, followed by two letters at the end. And that seems to be the generic format for most of our registration plate for our vehicles. Um, I'm not talking about the, the personalized ones. I'm talking about the generic ones. So if we wanted to have an input mask for all generic license plate numbers, we know that we're always going to start off with three letters. So we're going to use, and they're all compulsory. So we're going to use that letter L. So we're going to have three L's for our input mask. It must be L, L, L. So that no tells us that there must be three letters in the beginning. And this will be followed by three digits. So they will, there's never a chance for one digit or for two digits. It's always three. So therefore, we're going to have three compulsory digits, which means we're going to put three zeros there. And this is followed by th two compulsory letters. There's always two, so we're going to put two L's at the end. So this would be the input mask for a car registration plate in South Africa. So there are other options as well available to us. So for example, if you want all of the characters to be in uppercase, then you just put a great than symbol in front of the letters and they will make anything that's after it will then all letters will be in capitals and for lowercase you can just use smaller than letters smaller than and that will make all the letters into smaller than letters if you want to display a bunch of text literally like it is and especially if it's it's part of the code let's say you wanted to say abc or am at the end of a time for example um, and you didn't want that A to be confused with the input mask code A, then you could use uh, quotation marks around the AM and it will display the AM as is. But if you want to display one character literally, you could just use the slash um, for that. So whatever's after that slash will be literally displayed literally as it is. So if you put slash L, it won't be the code L, it'll just be the actual character L. So knowing that, if you remember our license plate number, we had... Um, LLL, 000, LL. But in South Africa, they all have to be capital letters. So to adapt to this input mask to make sure it's even better, to make sure that it takes into consideration that the letters must be capital, then we're going to put a greater than symbol in front of it. And that means all the letters that follow it will be in capital letters. So let's have a look at some input masks. So when you click, let's say we've got car registration, we want to put an input mask on that. So when I click on car registration, you'll see there's an input mask area. Now you can click on the little ellipse there and it'll take you through a wizard where you can add different 
uh, input masks. So you can actually have some default ones that are already set for you, or you can set your own. So we said it must be L L L followed by zero 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 followed by L L. So that's what the input mask that we said originally. And so what happens if I come to the actual data sheet view once we've saved? You'll see when I click on car registration over here, you'll see there's these input holders. So I'm going to type in numbers now and you'll see nothing happens. I'm typing numbers on my keyboard. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm typing numbers. Nothing's happening because the first three characters have to be letters. So I'm going to start adding letters. So I'll just add some letters and I'm going to keep on typing letters and nothing's happening. Why? Because the next three have to be numbers. So I'm going to shift to numbers. I'm going to add some numbers and I'm going to keep adding numbers. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Why? Because we got it. We're at the place where we need to add letters. So let me go back to the letters. And there we go. And it doesn't allow me to add anything else. See, it's already put the spaces in for me as well. But it doesn't allow me to put anything else in here. Just that format. Okay. So that's a nice little feature to make sure that the people put it, the values in the correct format. Now, if I go back here and I put in, you see, I put the, the, literal mark for the slash i mean for the for the space so that the spaces are as is if i put a greater than symbol in front of it now and i go back to my table you'll see that it's all in capital so now although my caps lock is off and i'm not pressing shift if i type in letters it's going to automatically put them in capitals so that's how the capitals work Okay, so that's a good example of an input mask for a car registration. Um, I'm just going to do, do some random ones. If we, if we had contact number here, um, let's say we always wanted the contact number to be uh, 10 uh, digits. So it could be 000 space 000 space 0000. Now, I know some countries, they had 10 numbers in their cell phone numbers, and then they added another one because they ran out. So they went, so the last one, for example, in this case, you could have 10, but you could have 11. So the last digit could be optional. So in that case, the optional digit was the nine. So in that case, you have, you could have 10 numbers or you could have 11. So you could have that particular scenario. So if I go to this particular scenario, boom, and I go to contact number, and I type in just three numbers and I click away. It's it's not it's not done yet. We've got to finish it. So I type in three more. Still not done. Now if I put in four and I leave the last one blank, do you see it accepts it now? Or I could put I'm typing in letters, nothing, but if I type in another number, it accepts that as also another option. So that's how you get the optional digits. And you could have something like a special code. Maybe there's a, a code that you need and the code is it's one letter followed by maybe another letter followed by one number followed by maybe another number. So A1 could be one or AB1 could be one or AB17 could be one or A17 could be one. Those are the different options. Well, in that case, you've got a compulsory letter followed by an optional letter followed by a compulsory number, followed by an optional number. So you could have that particular input mask over there. And so for that, you can type in, if we save it and we come here to code, I can type in L. Now, I would, wouldn't put a 9 there because that's a space for a character, so space 9. So if I click L9, that's a valid option. Or I can say L N 9 I'm, Okay, that's a valid option. Or L93, that's a valid option. Or L93. Or not, no, we want the L, but we don't want the N. So delete the N, put the L. Or L93, that's also a valid option. So those are the different types of input masks that you could get. So there we go, those are input masks. And just so we know, while we are on input masks, um, you saw that the code for capital letters is greater than and the, the small letters is less than. You can actually do that on format as well. You can put a greater than symbol on format. So let's take a uh, driver name. If I put a greater than symbol on format, you'll notice it doesn't matter what I type in the driver's name, it will always be capital letters. When I click away, it changes it to capitals. And if I go to it and I change it to a less than symbol, it doesn't matter what I type, um, it'll make it small letters. So if I make a caps lock and make it all capital letters and I click away, it'll convert it to small letters for me. So those are options for the format. So you use the input mask codes for that as well. For just those two though. Okay, so there we go. Those are input masks.
For other videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. We'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment and remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.